First responders, what's the most heartbreaking scene you've witnessed on the job? It was so disturbing that my partner took his own life afterward. It was New Year's Eve, and I was on the 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. shift. My partner was also working the midnight shift at the station. The fire and police buildings are right next to each other, and being New Year's Eve, each of the stations was having a small get-together. The cops came over to one of our empty bays, and we were sitting down eating and talking about how much it sucked being on the shift. No alcohol to see the new year in, we always had a high number of calls due to fireworks being illegally set off, and they always had a high number of violence and public nuisance calls. Our alarm went off, and we jumped up and threw our jackets on before even checking our pager or the emergency information computer service. The boys next door got the same call, and we went out code 1 with the police escorting us. We arrived on the scene just before midnight. A young woman was standing on the edge of the building. It isn't a massive height, but it doesn't matter. She wouldn't survive if she fell. We all knew it. The crew leader shouted to get the ground covered, and the cops started talking to her. Jay had been handed the job, he told me it was because he was the youngest, that he would be able to relate more to her. She started crying and saying she didn't want to do it. It was a mistake. She just felt so alone that she just wanted it to stop. Then she said that it was too late, she had to do it because she had already done everything she needed to. Jay started to tell her that it didn't matter if everything was in place. She didn't need to do it, and they would help her. He started telling her that two people would be going into the building and would meet her at the window to help her down. That she wasn't alone, and everybody here was going to support her. No one was here to hurt her. All those really cliche things you hear in movies, but Jay had a way with people. He could tell you the sky was made just for you, and you would believe every word. Every word coming out of his mouth was filled with nothing but love and concern. I love that man, and even now he's gone, I still miss him. Things were going fine. We had been given the access code to the building. The cops had rung ambulances and requested emergency care and treatment. The young girl had calmed down and was trying to climb back into the window. When suddenly, she tripped and fell backward, nobody had expected it. She hit the ground, and even with the ambulances working on her for a solid 15 minutes, she was pronounced dead. The coroner was called. Here's the bit that messed Jay up enough that he took his life. When she had told them that she had taken care of everything, she had met her two children. Three months and four years. They were found dead in their beds, cuddled up to their toys. Photos taken showed them looking like they were simply sleeping. The note they found on the table was begging for forgiveness from God for what she had done. The coroner stated that if they had been found within 15 minutes of our arrival, the four-year-old may have had a small chance of surviving, although serious brain damage would have probably occurred. Jay always blamed himself for not sending a party in the minute they got there. We were evaluated as to why the fire department didn't have a fall mat. The first responders were suspended, and Jay couldn't live with himself. I lost Jay in the autumn of the new year. He would have been 26 in August. This was the most heartbreaking experience. It has ruined a number of families' lives and still haunts me to this day.